What's up, guys? In this video, I will demonstrate you guys a method to measure the complex permittivity of a dielectric. First, we need to figure out why we need to measure the complex permittivity of a dielectric. As we already know that the complex permittivity including two parts. The first is a dielectric constant, and another part is a loss factor. And the ratio of a loss factor and a dielectric constant, which is called 10 d which indicate how much energy can be lost because of this uh, dielectric. So when we design substrate or any kind of a circuit, we need to know what's the permittivity or dielectric constant of the substrate. This will in influence our design. And for some, even though we can buy some materials from uh, a big company, they already measured the complex permittivity of their, their products. But the complex permittivity is related to the working frequency and the temperature. So if we want to design a circuit working at some specific frequency and temperature, we need to know the complex permittivity of the dielectrics by ourselves. This method I used today is called the rectangular cavity perturbation method. So we need to construct a rectangular cavity resonator as you can see here. This is a waveguide we can use to metal plate to short both ends of the waveguides. And then we have a small aperture on the metal plate to excite this uh, rectangular resonator. And this transistor can inject uh, the EM waves from the coaxial cable into this wave resonator. So there are two crucial things we need to point out. The first thing is, if we want to measure the complex permittivity, we need to make sure that when we insert the sample into this wave guide. The sample should be at the maximum E-field position. Another thing is, since it is called a perturbation method, it means that the E-field in this cavity has been shipped has been perturbed, which means when we insert the material under test into this waveguide, the E-field distribution into this waveguide shouldn't change too much. Since when we calculate the result, we assume that when we insert this sample under test into this waveguide, it only changes the E-field and the H-field as a close area to the sample but other part of the E-field do not change. We need to insert the sample at the maximum E-field position, and the sample should be really small. So I cut a slot at the middle of the waveguide. This is because I calculated that the maximum E-field position is always at the center of the waveguide. So I cut a slot on the waveguide, which will be easier for us to insert the sample into this resonator. After talking about the theory part of this rectangular cavity perturbation method, we can start our experiment. First, we need to measure the resonant frequency and the Q factor of this resonator when it is not perturbed. We can read the resonant frequency from the network analyzer and the Q factor of the resonator when there's no sample is inserted into the resonator. And the next step is we need to insert the sample into this waveguide. As expected, the resonant frequency shall be shifted down since the sample has a higher permittivity compared with air. We do not change the cavity size. The resonant frequency will be shifted down since the, the wavelength in the sample will be smaller. So you can see here, now the resonant frequency is here. I try to insert it a sample with a high permittivity, which is around uh, 12. So I insert it into this waveguide. You can see here, the resonant frequency has been shifted down a lot. And we need to write down this resonant frequency and the Q factor of this waveguide. We can use these four parameters, the resonant frequency and the Q factor of the cavity when it is not perturbed, and the resonant frequency and the Q factor of the cavity when it is perturbed. So use these four parameters, we can calculate what's the complex permittivity it is. Since we already know, we can measure the volume of the cavity and the 
size of the sample we used here, and then we can input these uh, parameters into this, and it can help us calculate what's the complex permittivity is. And this method can also work to measure the permeability. The difference is if we want to measure the permeability, we need to change the, the slot location. If we want to measure the permeability, we need to make sure the sample should be at the maximum H field position, not the maximum E field position. So we need to change the location of this slot. So this is the main part of this video. I hope you have learned something and there are some other methods which can calculate the complex permittivity such as the ring resonator method. I've already made a, a video previously talk about how to design the ring and uh, demonstrate you guys how to use the ring method to extract the complex permittivity of a material under test. Okay, thanks for your watching. If you like my video, please subscribe. And uh, you have uh, any suggestion or you suffered any issue when you try to measure the complex permittivity, you can leave your comments below.